What's going on? A plus is nerd mixes. It's your boy Indy Uchiha, and as you could tell from that logo right there, it's E3 2021. I've been covering the E3 coverage for this channel for a while, so I thought, why not do it? But only do the important stuff because we don't care about the little guys, right? Do we care about the little guys? No, we don't. Yeah, we do, but there's nothing of significance that's really been happening. So we're only going to cover the big boys, the guys you guys actually care about. And first up is Ubisoft or Ubisoft, depending on how you do it. Uh, they dubbed their conference Ubisoft Forward um, because Ubisoft, they came with a very lack of luster showcase with a couple of gems that i feel that are actually worth seeing uh it's added basically this to the digital conferences that it's had over the last year and we're gonna go over a lot of the stuff that was announced first the stuff that we really don't care well i don't really care about they announced a ton of dlc for games already out they announced uh and they announced the far cry 6 season pass trailer that's actually going to allow people to play as villains from previous games in the series and it will include far cry 3 blood dragon this is interesting because when it comes to far cry the most interesting characters in the game are the villains am i right or am i right any anybody disagree with that because i definitely don't disagree with that and it's my A plus opinion, so I'm going to stick with what I say there. The villains are the most interesting part about that. There was a game that came out in 2016, right? It was a virtual reality game. It was one of the games that almost got me to bite on VR. It was called Werewolves Within. Guess what? There is a movie that is dropping based on that 2016 multiplayer VR game, Werewolves would end set to arrive in theaters on June 25th is going to be pretty interesting when it comes to that game actually dropping. I mean, that movie actually dropping because from what I heard from the game, never actually got to play it. But from what I actually heard, the game wasn't that bad. The game wasn't that bad. It had a cool premise. They said it had a cool story. So it's going to be interesting to see what this movie will be like. It's definitely something that I'm going to watch. Uh, one of the big DLCs, and this is interesting because alongside updates on the second year, something that hasn't happened for this franchise before. They normally don't support two years of content, especially post launch content support. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is getting all new DLC called The Siege of Paris. It'll feature Evar. And they lead and they lead their band of Vikings on an attack on the French castle capital. Uh, it's supposed to launch sometime this summer. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a very, very good game. It it brought it to me. It breathed life back into uh the Assassin's Creed franchise. So I'm very interested in seeing what where honestly where it will go from here. It, it's 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 dope. Uh, Assassin's Creed One, Two, and Brotherhood were flipping amazing to me. Uh, the last game in that cycle, Revelations, which to me was a subpar game, but actually a pretty decent story. But Bro Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood are hands down like you don't get any better than that. I was really digging them. And uh, Valhalla is possibly the second or third best uh, Assassin's Creed game that I have played. So I am very interested in seeing where this goes from here. And hey, I mean, if they're going to support it, this if they're going to support this game right up until the next game comes out. Hey, I'm all for it. But make sure you check out that uh that four minute uh video. Um, you can check it out on IGN or you can go to the Ubisoft uh, YouTube. Check that out for things like four or four and a half minutes uh, discussing all the updates and expansions and the roadmap of actually when they're going to drop and everything like that. Uh, for all you people who for all you ladies who be on Facebook Live or who be on Instagram Live working out to just dance. Just Dance 2022 release date confirmed is launching November 4th with 40 new songs, including an exclusive version of Todrick Hall's song Nails, Hair, Hips and Heels. Um, uh, look, hey, you want me to keep giving you stars? Keep doing them workouts. Uh, this will give you new content, new music to dance to. So we don't have to listen to the same uh, Chris Brown and uh, uh, what's the girl's name? 
it don't matter. We don't have to listen to the same Chris Brown. Maybe you'll be some Doja Cat on there. We actually get you dance to some Doja Cat or something. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Six Siege is getting cross-play and cross-progression soon. Uh, Ubisoft revealed uh, more about its plans to bring cross-play and cross-progression to Rainbow Six Siege. Cross-play is planned to start on June 30th and will be between PC, Google Stadia, and Amazon Luda with other platforms coming early 2022. Sorry, console guys. We have to wait a little bit longer. Cross-progression is also coming sometime in early 2022. This is going to be dope if PlayStation decides, if Sony decides they want to jump on the train for this. Um, it'd be really cool for me to just pick up and go to my friend's house who has a PlayStation or any other thing other than an Xbox, you know, or a PC and decides they want to play some Rainbow Six Siege and I can, you know what I'm saying, plug in there with their extra system, whatever, and play with them. Uh, the, the dopest thing about it is the cross progression. You being able to progress your character on different platforms. So if I decide uh, the living room is taking, let's say, uh, your significant other or something is watching a movie in the living room and then you're able to just go to your office on the pc and pick up your game from there and still progress your character that is going to be really dope and I, i'm looking for more games to do that something that i'm actually interested in that i thought was super dope is rocksmith plus uh rocks anybody who knows rocksmith it was the game it wasn't really a game but it was the thing that was like the Guitar Hero and Rock Band, except it actually taught you how to play an actual guitar. You actually plugged in like a real guitar and played it. Well, Ubisoft announced Rocksmith Plus, a subscription service for its popular guitar teaching software that lets you plug in a guitar via USB adapter and learn popular songs by following along notes as they appear on screen. They actually have a closed beta starting the day that you can sign up for. So if you got your axe or something, you got an extra amp, or maybe you don't use an electric guitar and use the, the, the other one, then you can plug that in uh, with the adapter and you can sit there and you can learn how to play a song. Like it will actually teach you how to play the song. And that's dope. And the fact that this script subscription service uh, lets the library keep growing because they can put that money into adding more songs and adding the breakdowns on how to play them songs. So, you know me, I'm trying to learn how to play some Slipknot. So go ahead and slide me that Rocksmith Plus right quick. Uh, we're going to get into the, a couple of games that I felt uh, stood out and are actually worth checking out. Um, we're going to start with uh, a game that's been talked about, but this was um, this is a trailer that actually showed like what the game is at, what you actually doing the game and everything like that. So uh, I'm interested in this game just for the aspect of it being an open world multiplayer and the fact that it feels like within the concepts of the game, you could do absolutely anything any friggin thing that you want and i am here for it of course i'm talking about writers republic plus we got a release date announced uh ubisoft finally announced the writers republic release date september 2nd alongside a trailer showing off some of what players can do in the game writers republic is an open world multiplayer game where people can play with friends have a career compete and more while participating in sports like snowboarding skiing bike riding and even flying around in wingsuits now this game feels like forza on crack to me a little bit like it's really interesting uh the it's really interesting dynamics in this game and how it's going on i i honestly can't wait to get my hands on it just to see how it's going to be or or how we're going to do it uh, I, I don't know how other people feel about games like this, but I'm a huge, huge Forza fan. And I love multiplayer games, guys. It, it's just something about it. Uh, th This spot right here I thought was interesting. Snowboarding, doing tricks to capture uh, certain areas, turn them to your team color. Uh, to me, similar to Splatoon when you're trying to paint the stuff in order to take over when you take it over you win so it's all types of different competitive stuff in here this mountain bike trail thing got me this looked fantastic uh gave me a little bit of anxiety when i was watching it on the big screen i di di didn't really know what to think about it but hitting them bumps hitting them turns uh breaking properly if, if you got a pedal at a certain time to make sure you could do stuff 
man, I cannot wait just to see what this game holds. And the fact that it's, you know what I'm saying, an open world multiplayer that every other person in the game you're in competition with or you're playing with or, or you could do team sports and different stuff like that, it just seems really, really dope. It's like Tony Hawk on steroids. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think there was a game like this that came out a little bit a while ago, but I don't remember the name of it because I don't feel like it lasted that long. But I, I'm really looking forward to actually checking this out and see and seeing what it does. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Writers Republic. You know what I'm saying? Hit the comments. Let me know how you actually feel about that. I think it's dope. Um, I'm looking forward to playing it. I don't know how everybody else feels about it. But uh, I definitely want to I definitely want to check that out. I, I don't know if it, it depends on how much I'm going to have to drop for it. But but we'll see what's up. Uh, another game that I found was pretty interesting because I really, really dug the first one. Uh, played it a lot. It was one of the reasons why I rocked my switch so much. You know what I'm saying? is uh mario mario rabbits battle kingdom battle or whatever it was called i think it was called king Ram mario plus rabbits kingdom battle they announced a sequel a sequel was revealed for this game mario rabbits spark of hope it was officially announced it serves a sequel to the popular turn-based strategy mario plus rabbits kingdom battle an unexpected but charming collaboration between nintendo and ubisoft featured characters from the super mario and rabbit series um a lot of people call the rabbits like the discount minions. Um, if people really understood that the rabbits have actually been along, around longer than the minions, the minions are probably discount rabbits. Uh, but uh, this game, I really like turn-based strategy games and the fact that they put uh, these iconic characters in the game uh made it that much more interesting. It, it helped me get my, my nephews and stuff like that into strategy games. So... Hopefully they they end up checking it out. I'm definitely gonna check it out. We're gonna play it. We're gonna see what's up. Uh, I'm digging it. the The villain seems like he's actually dope. So I just I, I want to see what this game actually does. What's it about? Uh, it, it seems like they took the grid, um, like the grid play away when like you you actually have to like move within the grids and stuff like that. So uh that that has me really really uh geeked about what's going on so we'll, we'll see we'll see what up when it comes to this game uh i'm i'm looking forward to anything that i could actually play on my switch um there there hasn't been a lot of stuff that has kept me engaged in my switch so i really want to see uh how that goes and i don't know man yeah, you guys let me know what you think about that. I know that's not going to be a big deal for a lot of people, but it's a big deal for me when it comes to anything Mario. I, I feel like Nintendo really takes uh takes care of that particular franchise and it it ought to, it ought to be really dope, man. It ought to be really really dope. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what we can actually do with something like that and I want to see if they add in some type of multiplayer aspect of co-op. I didn't look that far into it, but they definitely didn't mention something like that as far as it came to um, in the trailer. But that'd be something that's really cool with that game if, if it has some type of co-op with it. But, you know, it doesn't need to. I'll, I'll play it by myself. Um, this is the game that they opened. Opened with and it's a game that's been talked about a lot. Uh, it's a game I don't know if a lot of people want but it's rainbow six extraction right so here we go the the, the showcase started with this it, it's the new rainbow six game uh they showed us a trailer which we have right here they uh they showed us gameplay a little bit later you know what i'm saying the trailer showed like a squad of players infiltrating the area it was a whole bunch of enemies whole bunch of different type of enemies and you had they had to use like different strategies and stuff to take them down. Now this is a game that is going to come out on September sixteenth. Anybody that's uh used to operatives and stuff like that from Rainbow Six Siege will uh will have understand uh, the f familiarity when it comes to uh how how this game operates. But instead 
you'll you'll be able to like upgrade your skills in order to deal with the the player versus enemy you know what i'm saying or as i should say player versus alien because instead of pvp it's pve when it comes to this game this is more my style the, the pv pvp was cool uh but i'm i'm real big on player versus enemy uh horror mode is like my favorite mode uh on gear on gears of war uh left for dead different types type stuff like that where you're actually playing against the uh what's a team trying to strategize against uh a, a, a computerized enemy so that this stuff is really cool to me and should honestly make for some amazing streaming content now from what i garnered from what was going on uh with this particular uh thing is that uh you go in to extract somebody to say somebody get in get out uh if you get captured you lose your player like you lose your player the progress and stuff that you made and if i'm if i was listening right you have to get a new team to go in there and try to like extract your character out in order to get your character back that is a dope concept especially for them people who you have to up or die all the time you know what i'm saying so uh i'm interested in seeing how this actually plays out uh this is a game most likely we will be streaming on my channel so i'm really geeked to see what's going to happen uh with this uh U ubisoft did have some very interesting stuff when it came to what was going on with these uh with these different types of games that were showing like i said it, it was only about four or five to me that were really worth going and then the other ones was a bunch of dlc and different stuff like that we were hoping at times that we would end up with maybe a new rayman bianca versus evil i think was canceled i don't think they're even working on that anymore we were looking for that new thing something new to spark interest in where ub is going or you know how they're handling their thing and uh, up until then we're like okay cool rainbow six extraction all right that that's the cool multiplayer game uh the the writers thing is something new although it might get like a niche fan base we don't know if that's something that hardcore players want mario's cool uh d all the dlc is stuff is cool but we're looking for something new man we're looking for something new that nobody else is doing and then boom we get beautiful green pastures right don't know what this is you know anytime ubisoft does something like this it is normally really really bad uh we're not going to speak on those games though when we're coming into like trees and forests and stuff and we thought it was gonna be the best thing ever and then it turned out being horrible but it's cool <gasps> is that one of the blue things from avatar yes first look at avatar frontiers of pandora uh ubisoft this was like the last this is like their end now or uh just wait or look first look at the end of everything that was going on to show us avatar is a huge franchise we know there's about one or knows about two or three more movies coming from this franchise so them getting this franchise and being able to do something like this is amazing to me they got uh it's i think it doesn't come out until like 2022 but it's on pc ps5 series x uh amazon luna and google stadia and and the game that we're seeing right here i don't know if this is in-game footage or if this is you know what i'm saying render footage or whatever but it it looks amazing especially if this is like a mo it has like a campaign mode but maybe it's like a uh a, a multiplayer mode where you could play either side because i do want to be in those mechs shooting up some blue things i do want to be able to you know hold rifles and stuff like that but on the other hand uh playing you know what i'm saying as these creatures and maybe having to use the uh the world around me in order to combat you know what i'm saying these definite stronger militaristic you know what i'm saying tactics uh whether i gotta use my surroundings maybe uh weaker weapons that break i mean it, but it has to be some type of scale to it world around me plans and stuff maybe I can set some traps lead people in the traps i mean it, it'll be really really cool but the uh gameplay like this man this is on uh par with like horizon zero dawn to me uh to be able to do something like this this might be like you know what i'm saying that thing that could be the on every system that's like horizon zero dawn so 
uh we'll, we'll see what happens with this i'm i'm really digging uh even though it wasn't a great showing yubi uh they did give us some things to look forward to and we do know they got it's plenty of more they could show in the future yubi's been coming to come into different venues and showing us stuff all year so we'll see what's up what did you guys think of this conference? Are any of those games anything to spark your interest? Would it, is it something that you're actually interested in playing? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, right? Right here. Hit that notification bell. Hit like, share. Tell your friends about everything. Gotta hit that notification bell so you know when we pop stuff up like this all the time. Because we didn't tell you we was covering E3. We just did it. So you guys can stay ahead and get everything. You want to talk about some of these games that came out? Or you want to talk about the games that you wanted? Throw them in the comments below. I'll be in there to talk to y'all. Or go ahead and join the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash A plus opinions. Come over there. $1, $5, $10 tiers. Get in there. Get into the Discord. And come in there and have a conversation with us at the Discord. All right, guys? Till next time. And as always, keep it A plus. This has been a Nerd Mix. I will be back tomorrow with the Microsoft panel right after a plus hero report so tune in for hero report and then come rock with me with the coverage from the microsoft panel all right guys till next time keep it a plus indie out